Welcome back to my studio. Today we're going to look at not the cameras from my play collection, but the cameras that I actually use when I make photographs. So I've shown quite a few of the uh, cameras from my just collection of vintage and um, antique cameras either here or on my Instagram. Uh, but I've not actually shown the cameras that I use when I make my photographic work. So I thought I would go ahead and just do that today and show you what kind of equipment that I use. So uh, since there's a lot, we'll go ahead and just jump in. For digital, which I don't do a lot of, I use a Sony uh, A850. And it's about I don't know, 10 years old now, maybe a little more than 10 years old. Um, it's a good full frame digital camera. It is a traditional DSLR, so it does have a mirror that flips up and down, but it still works. It's 24 megapixel and quite a few cameras out there are still 24 megapixels, so it's not lagging in terms of um, image size or anything like that, but it is a little bit on the bulkier side. The great thing about this is it uses the Sony A mount, which is also the Minolta autofocus mount. So I have on here a Minolta uh, macro 50 millimeter f 2.8 lens. This is my main prime lens. I use it for almost everything. Uh, but some of the other lenses that I have are the uh, 20 millimeter prime lens. It is also one of the older Minolta. Uh, these are the original designs. It's got the little ribbed hard edge lens uh, focus ring. But I also have a newer Sony uh, 85 millimeter 1.4. This is a fantastic lens. Um, extremely sharp, very fast. This is uh, just a rebrand of the Minolta. And I have to say this pretty much is, is as close as you can get to a perfect lens. For this camera in terms of how sharp, um, how straight lines are like pen cushioning and, and whatnot. Great lens. And then I've got a uh, 24 to 70 zoom. This is the Sony version. They updated it from the Minolta version which was 28 millimeter to 70. So this goes just a little bit wider uh, and has the SSM um, focus uh, in there, which is just their fast autofocus. And it's pretty good. I don't use it all that much, but um, when you need a zoom, this is a good general purpose zoom. It's a 2.8. Now, when it comes to 35 millimeter film, I have two, two of them. One is the original autofocus camera from Minolta. It's a uh, Maxim 7000. This is the camera that I bought when I was in college and took my first photo class. And it came with a 35 to 70 millimeter zoom lens. Not a good lens, but you know, it did its job. Uh, I want to say for the combo, when I bought this back in 1998, I paid $350 for it. And now you can get this camera from B&H for 35 bucks, maybe even less. So there's appreciation for you, but it is still a good camera. Um, eats up batteries, but still pretty good, even after all this time. And then the other one that I've got is the Minolta A9. Now this one's beat up. Um, I don't use it very often. I did not break it myself. It was broken when I bought it uh, off eBay. Not surprising considering the price. I didn't pay very much for it, uh, but it still functions perfectly fine. Uh, very fast. It goes up to something like 12 thousandth of a second. Yeah, 12 thousandth of a second shutter speed. Uh, full frame viewfinder. Uh, just a solid professional level camera. Um, just has seen better days when it comes to the grip, but not the worst thing that could happen. So for a 35 millimeter, this is a really great camera. 
Um, and the great thing about all these is that they use the same lenses. So being the Minolta autofocus mount, the A mount, the Sony A mount camera, uh, lets me just use the same lenses, which is why I bought the Sony because I was already invested in Minolta stuff at the time. So rather than start getting an entire new collection of lenses, it just made sense get what I can already use. So I uh, got on the Sony fairly early and um, it's clear that they are here to stay in terms of quality cameras. The E-mount's fantastic. I do have an E-mount. Uh, that's what you're seeing here with the two camera views. And they're good. I have a little adapter to let me use the A-mount lenses on those, although both of these are using E-mount lenses. One day I may get a full-frame E-mount camera to replace the 850, but I use it so little that uh, it's got to die, really, before I upgrade that. So these are my 35 millimeter. That's my DSLR. Uh, let me show you the medium format. For uh, medium format, originally I started with a Mamiya C330 twin lens camera, which is a 6x6 format, and the square didn't really suit me. So I replaced it with the RB67 model from Mamiya. It's a much bulkier camera. I mean, this thing's big, it's heavy, built like a tank, uh, but it does give me the rectangle, which I do appreciate. Um, for this, uh, if you've never seen one of these, it's kind of like a Hasselblad on steroids, uh, but it does create the rectangle, not the square. Uh, let's see, what can I say about it? Uh, it's big, it's heavy. There's no way I'm using this handheld, so I always use a tripod with it. Uh, and then I've got a few different lenses for it. This is the 90 millimeter, which is normal perspective. Uh, I've got a 50 wide angle somewhere in here. This is a 150. It's the soft focus lens, but I don't have any of the discs. So uh, I've actually never even used that lens. It came with it when I bought it. Um, and then a 180, which I use often. So these are the two lenses I use most often. Uh, I picked this one up when a store was closing. So I got a great deal on it, but I can't say I've actually used it. Um, and that's about it. Medium format, this is pretty much the only, um, the only medium format that I use, even though I have quite a few others to play with, like the Metalist, Kodak Metalist 6x9 that I just got. I had the Kodak uh, Reflex Twin Lens. What else do I have? Uh, quite a few other 620, uh, various antique cameras, but I don't use those other than just to play with and to have fun. So using a camera to make work, uh, this is it. This is what I use. So good camera, solid, uh, just very, very heavy, but fantastic sharp lens. Now, if I were to ever find a Mamiya 7 or Mamiya 7 II at a fantastic price, believe me, I would get that in a heartbeat and sell this sucker. Uh, because those are super sharp cameras um, and definitely more portable, but still give you that 6.7 format. Um, as far as this goes, it's just big and bulky, but it is good. So, good camera. All right, let's move on to uh, the large format. Okay, for 4x5, I do have a Crown Graphic. That was the first 4x5 camera I ever got, but I don't use it anymore. Uh, it's very limited on movements, and the lens board is a type that none of my other cameras use, so swapping lenses back and forth is pretty inconvenient. So while I still have it, what I mostly use now for 4x5 is this. Um, this is the Senar 4x5 camera. It's crunched up at the moment because it takes stuff to uh, extend and I'm not going to go grab all that right now. Uh, but let me just tell you a little bit about what this is. Uh, if you've never seen a Senar, Senar, Sinar, however you want to say it. Um, it's a modular camera. This one is technically a Model C because it has the uh, non-geared F front piece, but the geared P back piece. If I had this on the front and back, that'd be a P camera. If I had this style front and back, that'd be an F. 
this has both, it's a C. So it takes these rods, uh, columns that attach to uh, front and back, and that allows me to extend this as far as I want. I've got a single 36 inch or one meter long uh, column if I need it. Otherwise, I've got a bunch of smaller ones and you just screw them together to make whatever length. The uh, bellows here are kind of scrunched up. Let me extend this a little bit. Sorry, everything's rattling on here. Um, four by five cameras allow you to do all sorts of stuff. We're gonna do a four by five video at some point, a large format and go over movements um, and things like that. Uh, but this is a camera that I use. It is not exactly a field camera, but you can make it work in the field if you need to. The, uh, the camera has on here a lens board that holds Technica boards. So that's what I use or Technica style because I can use that on various cameras with these adapters. And for those of you that never used one of these, the film is uh, four inches by five inches. And you can make this piece turn so it's vertical. Um, and that's really about it. So I can use this in the studio. I can use it out in the field. It is a little bulky in the field, but uh, it's not impossible. I've got a case from um, Harbor Freight that it fits in really, really well. And what's great about this particular brand is just how modular it is because you can take uh, the bellows off like this. They come right off. And you can use them as different things. So. Either you can replace it with a bag of bellows for wide angle lenses, or if you have spare ones like this, then you can use it as a lens shade. You can put it on there, extend that. Now it's a lens hood. Or you can put it on the back and it's a um, hood for the ground glass so you can see it without a dark cloth. Um, just a pretty good camera. Um, let me show you a couple of things about this one in particular, and then we'll, uh, we'll go over some lenses and other things. Uh, one of the really cool things about these cameras and its modularity is that I can disconnect the bellows here, unscrew this, and just take it off completely. Now, should I want to, think get this centered up right. Now I can attach my eight by 10 back and bellows. So then I can attach the bellows up front which I've got to extend this part, raise it up a little bit. And now, granted it's hard to see because it's on this table and uh, really kind of taking up all the room, I've got an eight by 10 camera by replacing the bellows in the back, uh, ground glass cover. So really handy cameras, really nice to use for a variety of things. Um, so when I shoot eight by 10 in the studio, this is a fantastic camera to use because it's got all the movements geared and everything like that um, and just very very handy but it's not exactly a field camera especially with the 8x10 so for that i have my field camera okay this is my 8x10 field camera and it is a kodak master 8x10 uh we'll pick it up here in just a second so you can see it this has been called before uh, the metal deer dwarf because it folds up like a deer dwarf and it's metal it's uh aluminum and magnesium and this is not the first 8x10 camera that i had the uh the first one i had was a wooden burke and james tailboard style camera you can look those up uh 
I don't know, a lot of people like them. Uh, what can I say about the Burke and James? Uh, it is pretty much the Harbor Freight of 8x10 cameras. Uh, if you've ever shopped at Harbor Freight and bought a tool there, you, I think you know what I mean. Um, it looks like the name brand, but the moment you touch it, you know it's not the name brand. Um, so, anyway, these style cameras are more of a clamshell design. They open up like this. Yeah, let's turn it around here for the light. And there we go. So... Now it is ready to go. So this is the uh, the Kodak Master. Uh, it's, I don't know, 1950s, 1960s, something like that. And it's very fast to set up. It's got all the same movements as every view camera out there. Rear swing, tilt, uh, front swing, tilt, shift, rise. It takes some really unusual lens boards um, for the light trap. Let's see if I can show this. So it's got this weird little divot here. Here, we'll take this off. If I can get it off. Oh, watching the monitor and it's backwards. So it uses a, a strange little light trap here that's just unique to it. Uh, and again, I don't want to change lens board. So this is a um, SK Grimes made lens board adapter from Kodak Master to Technica. So I can use my Technica boards on my Cinar. I can use it on my Kodak, and if I ever get a 4x5 field camera, it will also take Technica boards. Um, and that's really it for these. I'll go over the lenses, I guess, uh, that I've got. I'm not going to grab them all out, but I'll tell you what I have. Um, when it comes to large format lenses, any, any brand is fine, um, honestly. Whether you get any of the big four, Schneider, Rodenstock, Nikon, Fuji, they're all going to work really, really well. Uh, so you don't have to be brand loyal or anything. All mine happen to be Schneider, and that's because, honestly, there's so many of them out there. Uh, the price is really good in terms of large format. Um, and they're consistent. You know, you're going to get the same sort of results from all of them, so why not? stick with what I already know works, but I would have no problem getting other brands if a good deal came across. Uh, focal lengths, I've got a 90 millimeter. I guess I'll grab them, hold on. All right, I've got a 90 meter, 90 meter, 90 millimeter Super Angulon that only covers four by five. Um, I've got a 135 millimeter Simar, uh, APO Simar, that's on the Sinar now. I've got a 150, which is currently on my graphic lens board, so I guess I did use this somewhat recently. Um, don't remember what for, but I know to change that over at some point. I have a 165 millimeter Angulon, so this is an extreme wide angle that works on this guy, the 8x10. Uh, just barely covers. Then I've got a 210. This is the APO Simar. It almost covers 8x10. Um, really wouldn't use it for infinity, but if I were focusing on something somewhat close and I needed a wide angle, but not as wide as 165, this would work. Uh... I've got a 240 um, Simar S, so not the latest model, but this is going to give me a semi-wide uh, perspective or long on a 4x5. And then a 300, so this is a normal perspective lens on the 8x10 and um, long lens on 4x5. It's big though, this has got a um, 105 millimeter filter. Uh, so when I do use filters on this, I typically attach them to the back because I use series nine, which are 86-ish millimeters in diameter. Uh, and that's it. So I do have, oh, I have one other lens, hold on. It's hiding somewhere. 
Okay, this one is my last lens. Um, it's an Eastman Anastigmat F10 21 inch. Uh, so a bit long for this. And I just haven't mounted it yet, so I need to do that and get it um, get it going so I can use it. Uh, maybe get it mounted in a shutter, I haven't decided yet. Uh, but it's a pretty big lens. Um, has really big coverage. I've tried it out. Looks like it may cover just barely 20 by 24, and I've been working on building a 20 by 24. One day I may show that to you all. We'll see um, if I ever get it done. So that is it. Uh, not, not much going on today. Just wanted to show you what cameras and such I actually use when I make photographs. So thank you for watching. If you'd like to ask any questions about this equipment, uh, please feel free in the comments uh, and we will see you next time.